Hi there! In this video I'm going to show you how to join Tenerife lace medallions and shapes. I will be using a very dark thread as you can see, um, so hopefully it will make it clearer for you. So let's get started. In this video, I'm going to show you how to join Tenerife lace medallions and shapes. This is one method and probably the most straightforward and simplest method. This works really well. Um, you can use all different shapes to do this um, and it's really just quite simple. A, a technique using a basic whipped stitch. As you can see, none of these medallions actually match in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> these are sort of little samples that I've done um, on TV shows or at shows explaining the technique. So they're not sort of designed as such to go together, but I think that's probably a good illustration about how you can sort of grow a piece of lace anyways without having to contrive patterns although it always looks lovely if you do that. I'm going to stitch these together using a really dark thread, so a brown thread, so that you can see it against all of these. Now ideally, a piece of lace, you would probably work within, even with colors, you would work so that you have reasonable colors touching each other, um, so that the thread can match through. Um, and if you're doing all a single color, you would use the same thread color and weight that you use. I mean, even here, I've got different weights of threads. So for the prettiest piece of lace, use the same color, use, or at least the same color for the edging. You know, your fillings could be all bright and cheery. And um, the same weight thread for for your joining. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to arrange them and I'm going to place them upside down so that I get an idea of what I want. Now of course because these haven't been designed to go together they don't sort of fit as easily as you might think or as they should. For instance this has um, less scallops than this one and ideally you would like to mix to join pieces that are similarly made um, but you know you don't have to do that the other thing is is that we have different edges so here most of these have a scallop edge um, and the scallop edge being that just get this to focus in the loop that has been on your holding stitch or pin is joined to the loop next to it. Now this is a really nice strong edging in that it can't really pull. It, even if this thread catches, it will only go as far up as those two and then because of the loops there it's not going to drop off. And some edgings can drop off so you have to treat them a little bit differently. This one is a plain edge. Now this has one knot on the loop and so that gives this straight edge across the top. And so because it's knotted on the loop, you've still got that strength there so that if it, that pulls, that's not going to come off. So you kind of need to decide where you're joining sort of inside of this triangle or inside of the loop. It doesn't matter which. And as I say, if everything was matching, you probably wouldn't even see either way. So I'm going to start down here and pretty much there's a bit of a join. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I am going to tie the knot, the th joining thread on in a single knot, but I'm going to leave a bit of a tail. Now the object is, is you should consider 
your joins so that you can join as much as possible to come round to the place where you've started. That way you can shore up your knot. So the proper way to do it would be to place the scallops together, right sides together, and whip stitch. Now of course when your scallops don't actually match, you have to consider how far you whip stitch. And sometimes you can find that it actually works out a little bit um, easier if your joinings are laid flat. So I'm joining three of the tiny scallops to two of the, well actually it will be three of the larger scallop. But then I think that to join anything else, uh, this is going to be a little hard for you to see with my hands in the way, to join anything else would pull this round and change the shape. So now we just whip around the scallops until we get to the point where the next needs to catch. So that would be here. It could be here actually. I'm going to move this back for a little bit of strength. I think I can get that scallop connected then. To that one. So then I will come through and I will whip through each of those. In fact, I am going to change to a curved needle because I think you might be able to see it a little bit better because I'll be able to avoid my fingers in the way when I'm placing the thread underneath. So now I'm going to join those two. Where are we at on this? We can choose two things. We can choose to go around on the inside one or on the outside one. I'm going to choose the outside one. So at this point, I'm just going to whip around the same as before, not joining it to anything, but working a basic stitch. because of this little scallop here, okay? And as I say, because these are different sizes, they've not been contrived to fit together. So we're gonna have some gaps, but I'll show you how we can deal with those gaps. If you have everything the same size, it's much easier. And of course, four circles, for instance, will give you a diamond, and we have a loom for a diamond shape so that you can make the shape to fit in. But I think it's important to show you that you can sort of make this work virtually with anything. So now I'm gonna come here, and I'm gonna join to this medallion, to this beige medallion. So in the same way, I'm joining two of those. Oop. Helps if you don't catch it. This is why holding it in your hand is a lot easier. But of course, if I do that, you're not really going to see what I'm doing. So now I need to come back because I want to come up this way. So I'm going to come back up like this in the same scallops as I did before. Now you see that has pulled in so that this can be joined to the, the threads. So 
I can just go ahead and go through both of those. I probably should have joined that to the pink as well. But hey ho, it's not the end of the world. And I'll join two of those and we're going to get the same situation there that in order to keep the star we're going to have a little loopy gap. So you want them close together but they don't need to be sort of all super close on top of each other. Now that scallop could go into this point. This scallop here. Yep. Let's go in the right direction, shall we, to make sure that it stays in nice. So it's it's basically just a back and forth stitch. And then let's see, if we want that one connected there, we're going to have more of a gap through here, or we can move this over to make it wider there. So I think we'll move it over. And work around. I think right about there, so we can join this medallion, the pink medallion, to the beige medallion. I'm going to take one more of those scallops. And that's why you tend to have the same number of holes in your surrounds because it is obviously much easier to count what you're doing. And then I'm going to go back And then I'm going to whip through these. I think the next one I'll join so I can go through that scallop and then join to this scallop. and then whip through again. Now, of course, you do need to make sure that as you work your stitches, the piece stays flat because it's very, very easy to say, oh, I can join that to there, but then you'll start to get it rise up, which is why I like to check it flat quite a lot, even if I'm holding it in my hand as I'm stitching. So I'm going to do a little bit of a whip on this, which I will have to pick up because it's a very small scallop so that I can just get to it because of the way the star is formed. And of course, this all strengthens up each of your motifs as well when you're working around them. And then that one we want to fit in right about there. So I think that when we get to this, we can probably join there. Mm. No, actually, I don't like that even though it does sort of touch, I think that I'll fill any of that sp space later. So I'm going to carry on with this and then I'm going to come up through on the orange one. So I will connect from orange to pink 
I feel that my hands are probably still in the way a lot, even though I'm using the curved needle, but I hope that you're getting a good enough impression of what I'm doing. And of course, because you're not splitting the thread, you can change your mind on which direction your stitches go, as I just did. And then we're going to go back down. And then get these connected to the center one. And I think I will come around on the orange one. And it's very straightforward as I say if you're just using circles it's very straightforward and your circles are the same size or they fit together um, with matching scallops. But that's not always this fun is it? Because part of the fun I think is trying out all the different shapes and seeing what you can come up with. as a whole piece. So, I'm about ready to join. Let's take it to the next one. Oh, actually, now there I went through the scallop, not the edging. And I'm going to take that out so that I go through the plain edge part. Because that's what I've done on the others. It helps to keep consistency and it will help to keep your medallion lying flat if you choose the same area to stitch through. So that's that. Then we're going to join to a couple of the scallops on this side of the white one. So we're joining white to orange, keeping that flat. Just do two points at this. There we go. And then I'm going to go back again. So it doesn't look very pretty, I admit, when it's um, a brown thread. <laughs> However, I hope you can see what it is that I'm doing. And then I'm going to whip around the scallops of the white. And it doesn't just have to be the scallops. If you've got a scallop edge, you could, if you wanted to, whip around this. The only difference is, is that would make the line here thicker. Um, than it perhaps is over here. So you do have to think about that within your design as well. Using the scallop tends to be more of, um, ultimately more invisible because it's just like more lace as opposed to changing the balance of the design that you've already worked. Now we're going to join that to the center. And we'll join that with a few stitches. And then I'm going to carry on whipping this around. And as I say, make sure your tension is there. Don't pull too hard. You want it to be tight, but if you pull too much, you pull up your um, stitching will pull up all of your, your pieces.
and we're going to go all the way back down to the starting point. And then at the starting point, I'm going to tie a reef knot. So we're going to do right, over left, and then left, over right. And because you already have that knot there, that should hold. If you're in any doubt, you can always do an overhand knot on one end. taking it further down if you use your needle. You can usually, if you're really careful, you can sort of get that to go right down to where you want it to go, but I haven't managed to successfully do that this time. Let's see. That's it. That's a bit closer. And then you just trim your tails. So I'll turn this over, let you have a little look. So even with the dark color, you can see that it's not too obvious in actual fact, um, but we do have gaps. So what do you do about the gaps? Now, if you're working a lovely even pattern, you will then want to work lovely even stitches within your gaps. Um, some things you won't have any gaps if you plan out your even pattern very well because you can plan out pieces that fit within. But that's not always the case and sometimes you'll be joining something like this and so you'll want to move on to filling stitches. We're going to start with a sort of triangle. Triangles are, very small triangles, are what a lot of the gaps will be. So a basic filling for a triangle is a darned shape. So we're going to turn over again and tie on, as before, with a single knot leaving a tail. One piece of thread at the point of the triangle. Okay. Now you need to work from the triangle to the scallops and then sort of back to the scallops at the triangle. Choose where you're going to sort of join them all and then which is going to be your point and then just work back and forth. Now obviously with a very fine thread you will have more of a filling here um, with a thicker thread you won't need as much. I'm just going to pick this up so I can get into this little scallop. And all I'm doing at the moment is I'm concentrating on the point to the center. I'm not going back and forth, okay? And again, lift that up so that I can get a very small scallop on that star. So let's pull that up a bit. There we go. I think I can just about do one more to fill that last gap.
and then back up to the top. Now at the top, you need to weave in and out and back and forth. At the small part of the triangle, it's best to weave in pairs. So I'm going to hold this up and hopefully, I'm going to move that tail out of the way, hopefully you'll be able to more or less see what I've done. So if I go under that pair, which is the first one, and then over the next and under, I know it's quite all over the place at the moment, but it'll all start to come together. And then over the last, and then under, there we go, that, that's the last one. And then through the scallop, okay? And now we're going to go back in the opposite direction and still work in pairs initially. And then you anchor. So you'll anchor either side to one of these two scallops. Okay. Now as it's starting to spread out, I'll change and go treat each of these singly, which of course means it won't, you know, your over and unders won't be a perfect pattern, but honestly nobody will see that, but it helps to spread this part out. So then we'll just work over and under single threads. Until we get to the next scallop. And then back in the other opposite direction going under and over opposite threads. realize it's all very dense now and you probably can't see properly. I think I've gone out of sync there, but you'll get the gist, I'm sure. And then back. And because this is not a full-on triangle shape, I have got to make some adjustments here because I'm not going to go all the way back over to there and keep it will become too dense. So I'll only go there and take it to this scallop. And so you basically are just filling it in. By weaving, you're making a slightly stronger filling. And so there's one method. Now you can go on to the next section if you wish. Work the next section of however you wish to do it and then work your way back to this starting knot doing exactly as um, you did previously or you can simply take this up again back up to your starting knot so that you can work that reef knot and tighten those threads so that will be one filling there's loads of different ways that you can fill them and a lot of it does depend on um, how you've set up the lace in the first place. So we'll just turn that over and you can see that gives a nice filling for the shape. Now that's quite a dense filling partially because I'm using a number eight cotton here and you you know you it just fills it up it fills up the spaces. 
Another way that you can do a filling in this these joins is to do one far more open. So we will take this one here and I'll show you what I mean. So again, from the back, and let's tie on about there. Remember to give yourself a bit of a tail so that you can join the others together. You don't always have to join on the first to the previous, but if you can manage it, it does make for a stronger connection. So, for this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up, I'm going to wrap around this one so I can get to position. And then I'm going to come down and I'm going to go through two of these because I'm going to have a more open in fact, if I put it flat, you'll probably see, so that I can have a more open crisscross. I can then go through there and come back down. And so that's left it more open. And now I can go back and again, still going on the overs and unders, so making sure to weave each time. So this is more of a grid pattern and good for squares and areas of that sort of size. And then I'm going to go, let's see, under. You should always go back at least, you know, down and up at least so that you sort of lock in those threads. And so there is a grid pattern which you probably can't see, so I'm going to lift that right up and see if you can see that grid pattern, not really. Let's get something white underneath it. So basic grid pattern. Now that grid pattern could be filled if you wanted it to be, um, but we're just going to leave that particular one open. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to whip through my medallion to get back to the starting point so that I can knot this one off. And so really you can just doodle between them, um, work weaving, work stitching. There's some other things that you can do um, that aren't traditional to Tenerife lace as well. Um, and that is you could work woven bars. So let's just show you that. So you see that one's a lot more open um, and a, so therefore more airy. You can of course just leave them and just work back and forth. Um, do I have a woven place where I can do a bar? Let's try over here. So what I'll do is I'll work a bar from here to here. I say this is not sort of the usual for uh, traditional Tenerife lace, but we can still do it. Same again, a single knot. Just pulled my needle out. Let's make this bar go. I think to the center piece. So I'm going to go back and forth. So 
So there's one stitch. Then I'm going to go up again. And then I'm just going to decide on the division coming back down. So let's say I go under the bottom one and then I'll go over both of the top ones and I'll keep that division. So if I bring this up, I can hopefully show you in a little bit more detail. So I'm going to go over and under back and forth. Get those pushed up quite tight. So of course this does look quite a mess with all of this brown thread, but if you can imagine it, all in white and these pretty little filling stitches holding everything together not ugly brown ones but as I say I needed it to be the brown so that you could see the contrast of where the directions I was going and so there you have a bar let me just tie these two together and then I will put the white behind it as well so that you can see that and turn it over. So that's adding a little bit of traditional needle lace in. Now when Tenerife lace was drawn thread work, you did see bars. So <laughs> it's like going full circle. So there it is from this side. And then if you turn it over, you can see so that you could use that, just one of those, to fill every one of your gaps. So, as you can see, there's lots of different ways that you can join your lace, and those are all um, utilizing it in the hand. So you would need to starch and, um, and or iron out when you've finished. Now the problem with working in the hand tends to be for most people is um, a tensioning and a spacing. If you get one or two out then they'll all go out and then you could find that you have a bigger gap somewhere that you didn't want. So I'll do a second video um, in a week or two weeks showing you an alternative way um, and one which if you are somebody who likes to be very precise or finds it difficult holding all of these in your hand the second method may well be of more use to you and um, I will try to get some matching medallions made up in time as well that you can see the effect that you can achieve Thank you very much for watching. I hope this was a help to you. And um, do please, you know, comment if there's anything else that, that you think that I can possibly film for you. Do let me know. And uh, do hit that subscribe button. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.